It's been a busy month across all three divisions, so let's get right to it. Sheriff Reese would like to talk about the Eagle Creek Fire and the impacts it's had on our agency. He'll also discuss promotions in the Corrections Division at the Chief Deputy level and recap the 2017 Community Academy. Finally, Sergeant Banta will share with us some of the renovations being done in the acute mental housing area at the Detention Center. Of course, we'll have our new hires for this month and celebrate those who are retiring from the agency. This Labor Day tested our agency as the Eagle Creek Fire, fueled by the east winds of the gorge, began jumping ridge to ridge at a pace that placed many in East Multnomah County in harm's way. The extreme danger of the fire on that first night is etched in the memory of those who were there. Hot embers showered over our deputies and search and rescue volunteers as they bravely facilitated emergency evacuations under rapidly changing conditions. Our staff responded without hesitation to set up a command post, deliver door-to-door -door evacuation notices, facilitate those evacuations, and provide ongoing support to our community. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office personnel, our search and rescue volunteer uh, group personnel, and Citizens Patrol came together, got organized. We were able to contact all of our residents and uh, complete a level three evacuation process all the way west to the East Corbett area. In addition, MCSO maintained its presence in evacuated communities working 12-hour patrols alongside partners from the Portland Police Bureau and the Oregon State Police to ensure properties were kept safe and round-the-clock fire watch was present. Members of the agency participated in the emergency command centers in Odell, Glen Otto Park, and the Troutdale Police Community Center. These connections with emergency management teams, fire officials, and forest service partners ensured our community was kept safe and informed throughout this event. Our community deserves the very best our agency has to offer, and I am proud to say we delivered. Our response to this incident highlights the value of both community trust and intergovernmental collaboration. I want to thank all of the involved members for their commitment throughout this event. I was impressed by your performance to this very real test, and I'm proud to be part of this agency. September was also a busy month for MCSO on the social media front, as both Twitter and Facebook quickly became our primary means of communicating emergency information to community members during the Eagle Creek Fire. Immediate access to rapidly evolving evacuation orders, press release and briefing announcements, and providing information and photos regarding the condition of specific areas and landmarks were just some of the ways we were able to use these tools effectively. As a result, we also experienced a significant increase in followers. And a new celebrity emerged in the form of Deputy Bobby O'Donnell's partner, K-9 Spencer, whose majestic photo on top of Larch Mountain has so far been viewed on Twitter over 56,000 times and has over 800 likes. We currently have over 9,000 Facebook followers and over 11,000 on Twitter. These are really exciting milestones for our agency, and we couldn't have got to this point without the great pictures and videos that you've been providing for us to share. So thank you. Deputy Crumpschmidt's video of the Eagle Creek Fire has been viewed over a quarter of a million times on Twitter. Keep sending us your stories and images so we can continue to share the great work that you do every day. In fact, to help with this, the Communications Unit will be releasing, starting next month, a series of quick tutorials to help you take the next viral image for MCSO. If you haven't already, please like and follow our social media pages and stay tuned for future updates. I want to take an opportunity to welcome this month's new hires to the Law Enforcement, Corrections, and Business Services Divisions of the Sheriff's Office. With new talent comes fresh ideas and perspectives and provides the energy needed for MCSO's continued development and growth. I appreciate the efforts of the Human Resources Unit in recruiting and processing a diverse and capable group of new employees to join the agency. Please welcome our new hires as they begin working in their positions. I'd also like to congratulate Sergeant Keith Bybee and Lieutenant Steve Bevins on their promotions this month and thank them for their willingness to serve in leadership roles within the Sheriff's Office. This month we have two members retiring from MCSO. I want to thank them for their dedication and service to Multnomah County throughout their career. As public safety professionals, they've provided an invaluable service to the community and their work did not go unnoticed. I wish both of them the very best retirement will bring. 
Last July, Chief Deputy Schultz announced he had accepted a position with the Deschutes County Sheriff's Office and would soon be leaving MCSO. Shortly afterwards, we began a national recruitment to find the very best candidate to lead the Corrections Division. After an exhaustive screening and selection process involving 13 external and two internal applicants, I'm proud to announce that both Derek Peterson and Nicole Morrissey will be promoted to the rank of Chief Deputy of the Corrections Division, effective October 1st. The decision to create a second Chief Deputy position was part of a larger plan to reorganize the Corrections Division in an effort to improve management efficiency. Therefore, each Chief Deputy will be responsible for managing a group of distinct operational components of the division as follows. Facilities management, comprised of the Detention Center and Inverness Jail, will fall under the responsibility of Chief Deputy Peterson. Services management, consisting of facility services, court services, and auxiliary services, will fall under the responsibility of Chief Deputy Morrissey. Chief Deputies Peterson and Morrissey will be transitioning with Chief Deputy Schultz until his departure date on December 1st. I want to congratulate Chief Deputy Peterson and Chief Deputy Morrissey on their promotions and wish them the very best in their new roles in the Sheriff's Office. The next step will be to select new captains to fill vacancies in the court services, training, and auxiliary services. The process will be open to all non-probationary lieutenants in both the Corrections and Law Enforcement Divisions, and I encourage everyone eligible to apply. Specific application and selection details will be announced soon. Earlier this month, MCSO hosted the 17th Annual Community Academy and nine local officials, business leaders, media representatives, and community members attended the event. After months of planning and preparation, the goal was to give participants an opportunity to learn more about the inner workings of the Sheriff's Office through various presentations, tours, and first-hand experiences. Each person was partnered with a deputy and outfitted with a vest and other gear prior to roll call. Throughout the rest of the morning, Participants underwent training using simunitions, tasers, simulated OC, basic defensive tactics, and handcuffing techniques. We then had a working lunch as BOEC staff came to the training building to dispatch calls to our new recruits who responded to scenarios involving domestic violence and mental health. After some education and discussion on officer-involved shootings, the group was given a detailed tour of MCDC where they learned about each component of the booking process, the multiple classifications of the fourth floor, and efforts being made on the behalf of adults in custody in our acute mental health housing module for Delta. The tour wrapped up with a visit to one of the general housing modules for a look at the conditions and discussion of services, and then off they went to the Columbia River Patrol Office to enjoy a barbecue dinner with hot dogs, chips, and some pretty amazing hamburgers courtesy of Deputy and Chef-in-Chief Josh Atkins. The evening was spent observing a canine demonstration by Ranger, with Captain Harry Smith taking a few bites for the team, and informative presentations by Search and Rescue, the dive team, and SWAT. Finally, participants were taken on a boat tour of the Columbia River, where they learned about the unique services of the MCSO River Patrol. It was a long day for the participants, and an even longer day for staff, having started at 6 a.m. in the morning and ending around at 10 at night. I want to thank everyone in the training unit and all the staff who planned and participated in this event. I'm incredibly proud of the professionalism, skill, and excitement you brought to this year's Academy. It was truly a success, and you deserve all the credit. Every newly promoted sergeant in the Corrections Division is responsible for developing and implementing a project during probation that both challenges their skills and vision and helps MCSO's overall operations and mission. This month, I'm pleased to highlight Sergeant Amy Banta's project, designed as part of an ongoing effort by the Sheriff's Office to continue to improve the level of care and custody for people with mental health issues. The problem that we've always had in Fort Delta is that the inmates that are housed in this environment often can act out violently, which creates use of force. It's not healthy for the, for the inmates. I was looking for kind of a solution to help stabilize the population just a little bit, find a way to get a better response from them and to also help with the feelings of isolation that, that the inmates can suffer from.
It's very important that we remember that this is a jail and there's only so much that we can do in a correctional environment. Um, we certainly can't take the doors off. We can't compromise the safety and security of the facility. But there are some physical changes that we can make to the design of the unit to help the inmates feel like they're in a less institutional environment and a more therapeutic environment. So as a solution, I created a proposal for a multi-phase project to redevelop and redesign. Phase one of the project was the installation of music. As we've learned in the past, when we were utilizing music at the Inverness Jail, it was very effective in keeping the inmates calm and relaxed and less agitated. The inmates uh, seem to be less stressed, um, especially on their walk times. They can actually enjoy it, pick a channel that they want to listen to. Um, one particular inmate uh, who would come out previously would be irritated and agitated and oftentimes would lose walk time. Uh, now kind of turns it into a dance party. Phase two of the project was to repaint the housing unit. We reached out to the Unity Center, which is the newest psychiatric facility in the Portland area. In our adult spaces, we also considered calming and soothing colors. We considered uh, a, as low a lighting as possible to move away from the institutional feel and really uh, create a place of healing and hope for people who are experiencing crisis who may not want to be here at the time that they're here. With the help of the Planning and Research Department, we, they were able to identify the exact shades of blue and green that the Unity Center used, and those were the colors that we decided to use in our project. So phase three of the project was to make a creative writing space for the inmates so that they could out, have an outlet for their feelings and to try to deter them from the use of their feces, spreading it on the walls and such. Initially, we went ahead and placed this here so we could get a feel for how the inmates would react to it, whether they would utilize it, if it was going to be successful, um, and, and meet our project goals. Immediately, they took to the chalkboard. It has been a success. We've not had any issues. So we went ahead and expanded the project by placing a very similar board in each one of their cells. It was really impressive to see the chalk that you guys decided to use in the rooms. I think it's important to give people who are experiencing a mental health crisis multiple ways to express themselves. So whether that's through words and talking to your staff, or whether that's through drawing their feelings and thoughts on the chalkboards, I really just found that a thoughtful way to allow people um, to show who they are and share those messages with you all. Phase four of the project was to install the realistic landscape panels on the wall. This is something that we first began at Inverness last year in the treatment readiness storm. And it seemed to be very effective for the inmates in that environment. The hope is because of the way that they've been displayed, the inmates will be able to see them when they're inside their cells and lessen the feelings of isolation. So in speaking with the facility commander, um, he has been very invested in this project and he felt that we needed to just go one step further in addition to what I had initially proposed. And that final piece that we would like to add to the project, we're going to remove this table from this area and we're going to put down some carpet tiles as well as a foam-based durable furniture that we've ordered. It'll make this just a little bit more comfortable. I'm glad that I took this project on. I'm, I really believe in the goals that I've set for it and I look forward to seeing the results in the future. Finally, MCSO will soon launch a new mental health diversion program designed to refer people who suffer from mental illness and commit low-level crimes, such as trespass to or disorderly conduct, to a crisis care facility instead of being booked into jail. Modeled after the successful Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion Program, or LEAD, MCSO will work in cooperation with Cascadia Behavioral Health Care, the Portland Police Bureau, and the District Attorney's Office to help individuals receive appropriate care and treatment. The program is scheduled to begin November 1st, and I look forward to providing more in-depth details in a later video. Stay safe out there.